Okay, there we go. So this is now fully underway. Um, here's the noisy input image. And then this is the output of our CNN. And on the right hand side, we have the training loss, uh, which is diminishing with um, increasing epochs or iterative updates of the parameters of the CNN. In this video, I want to give a very simple introduction to how to code up a convolutional neural network or a CNN. And on the screen here, I've got an example image of James Clark Maxwell, a noisy version here. And we'll be training a CNN to denoise that image to give this kind of result when we have a very over-parameterized CNN. And if we use uh, knowledge of the true reference here, we get this kind of very nice result. Or if we don't use knowledge of the uh, reference, then we would get some inferior result here, but still of interest. The main goal of this video is really to introduce you to how to code up CNNs. And so we'll be using a Jupyter notebook and using the PyTorch deep learning framework. Okay, so these are the kind of examples that we'll see running once we've done our code. Here's a noisy image. This is early on in the process of training um, a, a large um, convolutional neural network. And we can see here with um, 40 iterations, 40 epochs, uh, we are beginning to denoise this image. If we keep going, the denoising gets better and better and better. And so here with the case of a large over-parameterized convolutional neural network with supervised learning and knowledge of the ground truth, we get, of course, a very nice result. Um, if we reduce the size of that CNN to try and reduce the overfitting, we still get a quite nice result when we've got knowledge of the ground truth. If we go to self-supervised learning where we don't have knowledge of a ground truth, um, then we get a result like this. But again, this is really um, for educational purposes, this video. So let's get underway then with doing uh, the code for this. And so already to start off with our Jupyter Notebook, you can see here I'm importing NumPy, that's um, the kind of core scientific computing uh, library for Python. And I'm gonna call that NP, as many people do. I'm also gonna use uh, data visualization with matplotlib. And I'm gonna use uh, PyTorch, the deep learning framework here. So we're gonna import Torch and then we're going to use the neural network uh, module that comes with PyTorch. And finally, because I want inline display of results, uh, we'll use the interactive Python um, library, I, IPython. OK, so let's just run uh, to make sure that's in place. OK, good. So now then we need to uh, read in an image as a reference. So this is um, what I'm going to be calling the true object. So here I'm using uh, matplotlib uh, to read in uh, a JPEG. You can obviously pick whatever uh, image you like. Um, I'm going to call that the true object. and I'm going to use underscore NP to reflect the fact that that is a NumPy array. OK, and um, what I'm going to do now is uh, take a look to make sure that I've correctly read that in. So we use matplotlib for that. So I'm going to create a figure and some axes. Um, I'm going to use a kind of a canvas containing uh, one row with three columns and it'll be 12 inches wide, four inches high. And um, then I'm going to call up imshow for the first um, of those um, three axes. Uh, use a grayscale color map and set the title to be true and then switch off um, the axis so as I don't get the tick marks and the numbers because I'm only looking at an image. So let's see if this is working. There we go already then. What I've done is just read in the James Clark Maxwell image there and I've just displayed it using those lines of code. Right now to do um, a CNN we obviously need a problem to solve and so the problem that we'll be solving will be um, to denoise a noisy version of that image. Um, now, even before we get to the noisy version of the image, um, we're going to have to um, be working uh, with a different data type. So instead of NumPy arrays, which here I'm using for the purposes of visualization, but to use the um, PyTorch deep learning framework, we're going to have to work with Torch tensors. So I've got a very simple couple of lines here defining a couple of functions. And what these will do, first of all, np to torch, that's going to take a numpy array, such as the one we're just looking at on the screen, and it's going to convert that to a torch um, tensor, which will be suitable for going into our CNN that we'll define in a moment. And then I'm going to also have a function torch to np that will take a, a torch tensor array, 
Um, it will detach it from the computational graph. We'll, we'll um, touch on that briefly, hopefully later on. Um, it'll make sure it's on the CPU and it'll render it as a NumPy array. So this will convert from torch uh, to NumPy arrays and this first one converts from NumPy arrays to torch arrays or tensors as they're known. Okay, so with all of that in place, um, let's now uh, do as I was saying earlier, which is to create the problem, in other words, the, the noisy version of this image that we want to train a CNN to denoise. Okay, so first of all then, a true object. Um, first of all, earlier it was as a NumPy array. What I'm going to do here is convert that NumPy array, there's the NumPy array, convert it to a torch tensor using uh, that function. And once I'm in a torch tensor, um, I'm then going to create Poisson uh, noise from that true object. So this treats that uh, the image as a set of values, um, parameters of a Poisson distribution, and then it will create a, a Poisson noisy version of that uh, true object. Um, okay, let's see where we're up to. Notice here I've got this subtlety um, to device. What that means is that this true object as a torch tensor um, will also be sitting on whatever device I specify. And effectively, that's either going to be your CPU or, if you have one, a GPU. And so that's what I'll be trying to use on my laptop here. So I'm going to define what that device is um, as follows. So it's going to be either your uh, GPU, if you've got uh, a GPU available, otherwise it'll be your CPU. Okay, so let's check this code is running. Okay, that's all run without problems. But um, what, I'm, what I'm going to need to do as well is once I'm working with these torch tensors for deep learning, I will need to uh, visualize um, those results. And I'll do that uh, the simple way, just by converting those torch tensors back to NumPy arrays and then using matplotlib. So I use matplotlib there to display a NumPy array. And likewise here, I'm going to use uh, matplotlib again. This is the same uh, first couple of lines of code here. The only key thing to note here is that I've just converted from my true object in a torch array um, to a NumPy array, okay? And so that just makes it a very easy way um, to visualize uh, a torch tensor. Um, but then also, remember now we've defined a noisy version of the image. So now we're in a position to take a look at that noisy image as well and display that. Uh, you'll notice here I've displayed, um, I've got a range of display values for that noisy image that are constrained to be in the same range as the original true object, just so as the noisy version doesn't get displayed in a misleading uh, way. Um, you know, if a noise spike um, was very large, uh, then it would suppress all the other values in our visualization. So I'm just gonna uh, keep that in that display range. So let's take a look. Um, Okay, looks like uh, we've hit a problem here. Um, and let's see what the problem is. It's clipping the input data um, to a valid range. Okay, so this is due to the fact that the values here are not uh, well scaled in my input image. So what I'm gonna do is uh, rescale uh, my, um, in fact, it's, it's, it's more than that actually. Notice here, all I did was read in a JPEG. So I've actually missed out a very crucial line here, uh, which is this one here, which is to first of all grab just one of the RGB channels. So I'm taking the first one here and then take all of the um, values for that one channel. That's because here I'll be working with grayscale images. Okay, that's the first um, fix. And also to make my noisy image more interesting, I'm going to reduce the size of the values. Okay. So if I rerun this now, um, what we can see is our true image looks just the same way as it did before. It's not impacted by the fact I've just picked one of the RGB channels from my JPEG, and it's not impacted by the rescaling. It's only when I get to the noise um, that now you can see by picking an appropriate um, scale for the image, when I do Poisson on that, I'm going to get a, you know, an interestingly noisy looking result there. Okay, so um, that was the NumPy display and this was the one that had gone via the torch tensors. So we should be now ready to begin to move on to dealing with the problem, which is um, how to code up a CNN to denoise uh, this image here. So let's, uh, let's do that in this next code block here, this code cell. 
Um, what I'm going to do then is define um, a convolutional neural network. So I'll put all the code in here and talk you through it. So we've got a class um, in PyTorch uh, that inherits from the neural network module. Uh, we run our standard initialization here. Now this is a class that we are defining, even though we inherit from the neural network module. We're going to run an initialization whenever this class is, inst is instantiated as an object. It will run this um, initialization here. And what we'll be doing is supplying a number of output channels. Okay, I'm just using num channels for the number of output channels. And what I mean by that is the number of output channels um, for many of the convolutional layers that I'll be describing in a moment. Um, this runs the initialization for that base class that we're inheriting from. And then here is the core definition of our convolutional neural network. So it's composed of a number of layers, um, so a sequence or a cascade of layers. Uh, the first layer is, um, again, from the neural network module, conv2d. And we've got one, first of all. What that means is the number of input channels to this convolutional layer is just one. Why is that? Because we've just got one image. In fact, it would be this noisy image that will be going in to this CNN. Then we've got the number of output channels, and we'll be supplying that as something that we can choose when we first instantiate this class as an object. So number of output channels. Uh, this is the size of the kernel for conv2d. That would be a three by three kernel. And this padding is saying, well, actually, OK, we do want to pad the image um, so that uh, these three by three kernels can correctly go to the edge and operate on padded pixel values and so not change the size of the image when it comes out of this conv2d layer. Now this conv2d layer does have one input channel but it has this many output channels and so what that will mean is that in fact there will be this many convolution kernels in this layer. Okay there'd be three by three in size so nine values each uh, but there'll be this many of them, which will mean that we get that many output feature maps or output convolutions from this one, con one convolutional layer. Um, this will also provide a, a trainable bias as well, so some kind of global offset to each of those output um, channel images. And then um, we'll run it through a non-linearity. Uh, this is effectively a modified version of the ReLU, the Rectified Linear Unit. The Rectified Linear Unit basically sets negatives to zero and retains the positive values. It, it's a non-linearity, a kind of a thresholding uh, operation. But I'm using the parametric version of it just to soften it so that it doesn't actually set negatives to zero, but it can train up um, the level to which negative values are suppressed. Um, so that's the first two layers in our defined CNN, our convolutional neural network. Um, the next uh, few layers, what I'm doing is again another conv2d layer, but now this needs to operate not on one input channel, which was the case for the first layer, because there was only one noisy input. Here now, it's going to be operating on all of the output channels, all of the output feature maps from that uh, first conv2d layer. Okay, so that's why the number of input channels is this. Um, and then again, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose to have this many output uh, channels, okay? So that means we'll have, um, again, three by three kernels, but they'll have uh, this many channels um, for each of those kernels, and that we'll have that many kernels, okay? So we'll end up with that many output feature maps. Again, same padding and also another nonlinearity. Same process again here. Now, on the very end of this uh, sequence of um, of layers. In fact, maybe I can just clean up these spaces here. It's a bit unnecessary at this point. Um, at the very last uh, few stages here, these last couple of layers, what, what we'll have is uh, the number of output channels as the number of uh, feature maps um, going into that last conv2d layer. But what we're going to say is we only want one uh, output channel, one output image, because of course we want something hopefully close to the true. Okay, and that's one single output image. Um, again, we're still using a 3x3 three three kernel, and um, in this case, the 3x3 three three kernel, just to be clear, there'll only be one of these 3x3 three three kernels, but that 3x3 three three kernel will actually have this number of channels to it. So it'll have um, quite a number of values in it, uh, but spatially it'll be 3x3, three three, and it'll have to have um, this many 
um, instances, versions of that kernel in order to operate on that many coming input channels to this convolutional 2D layer. Right, okay, um, so that's the definition of the CNN, just in very brief terms. And then when we'll uh, call up um, the object, which will be uh, created when we instantiate this CNN class, uh, when we call it up, there'll be this forward function that is used. And in essence, what that will do is take an input image. It'll uh, just pad it uh, with a couple of extra dimensions because a, a CNN, a convolutional 2D layer, actually has um, a batch number and a, a channel number uh, as well. And all we're dealing with are images with just two uh, dimensions. Okay, remember back here, I was just dealing with purely um, 2D images, I'm just having one channel, so effectively there's a 2D image, and so here I'm going to need to just uh, create extra dimensions for the standard expectation of a convolutional 2D um, layer in terms of what it expects as input. So that's why I've got that unsqueeze, unsqueeze, run it through the CNN, and then once we've got the output result, I'll just squeeze back to get it back to a regular 2D image. Okay, so long story there, just for a quick description of the CNN and um, what we'll be doing here. Next is instantiating that class. In other words, create an object from that CNN class. And now I'm gonna concretize and put in a hard value here, 64 for the number of output channels. So that means at the very start, this noisy image will go in and it'll generate um, 64 different uh, feature maps that will be coming out um, at that stage in the CNN, and then it'll go through the processing that I just talked you through. Okay, um, now let's check that this um, is okay. No complaints with that class definition at the moment. Um, what I'll do now is actually try using um, that CNN. We've instantiated it already here. So now I'm gonna put in uh, this noisy image and get an output. Um, so let's check that runs. Seems to run, that's good. Um, so let's take a look at um, how it seems. So that's, uh, let me uh, just copy these few lines of code here and I'll talk you through them as before. So first of all then, um, for the next figure, I'm gonna display the true object. I'm gonna display the noisy version of the um, image. And again, keeping the display range uh, to match that of the true objects. Let's just do a quick check here. Okay, this is the true, this is the noisy. Now remember, we've run it through our output. Um, we've run it through our CNN to get an output from the CNN. So let's take a look at uh, the output. Okay, so what I'm doing again is an im show on that output uh, image. So let's rerun that. Okay, so not much to see at this stage. You can maybe make something out there, um, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is train up the parameters for each of those convolutional kernels and the uh, biases and the parameters for the parametric relu. We're gonna train them up so that the output does something useful. And of course, in this case, we want to put in a noisy image and run it through a trained CNN to get um, something that looks like our true image. Okay, so we need to get on with some training. So let me, uh, and this is going to be the last code cell, so we're almost there. Um, okay, so first of all then, uh, to train a, a convolutional neural network, we're going to need to use an objective or a cost or a loss function. And what that does, as the one shown here, the mean square error, what that does is take a look at the output from our CNN and it compares it with whatever the target label or reference should be. So in the first instance here, we'll be training with a reference being our true. And so the mean square error will look at the output from our CNN, compare it to the true, and then that will describe how well the CNN is doing. In other words, it's a loss function or a cost function. Okay, but it's all very well finding out how bad or how good our CNN is. Here it's obviously doing very badly. Um, but then we need to change the parameters in that CNN. In other words, all the values in all those kernels. And we do that using uh, one of the optimizers in uh, PyTorch. And so here I'm gonna use the Adam optimizer, which is a, a variation of stochastic gradient descent. It's gonna take the gradient of that loss function and uh, we'll back propagate um, the gradients 
um, through the CNN in order to be able to update all the parameters in the CNN. So that Adam optimizer is going to use the parameters, all those kernel values and so on, the, op the biases, the parametric uh, relus. It's going to take those parameters and update them, okay, according to um, the loss function that we've defined here. Okay, um, and also we're going to need to use a learning rate that's uh, effectively comparable to a step size. In other words, how much do we actually make changes to parameters based on the gradients? Okay, um, also we're going to take a, a check on how our loss function is doing. In other words, how bad is the mean square error at any given um, update of parameters in our iterative optimization? Um, I'm also going to define a certain number of training epochs or the number of iterations uh, for updating uh, the CNN. With all that in place, we're now ready to start our training loop for the CNN. So for EP, which is going to be my epoch number, um, in the range of 1 to 100,000, this is a very large number, I won't run it for this many. First of all, um, we're going to zeroize the gradients um, associated with our optimizer here. Um, right, but anyway, let's make this clear in the next steps by saying um, the output, just like we had before, the output, okay, is just my CNN object, the CNN network, operating on that noisy image. So we're putting the noisy image in and we're getting an output image. Then we use our loss function that I just talked about. Okay, so the loss is going to be given by the loss function, mean square error loss. And all that is, again, I've just got this squeeze here just to remove any excess extraneous dimensions that might have been left behind. I haven't double checked as to whether this is even necessary here. But what we have then is the output from our CNN as one of the arguments for our loss function. And then the true reference. Okay, if we're using supervised learning with knowledge of the true, um, then this is um, uh, the label or the target um, in our loss function. Okay, uh, so now we will be ready to look at our denoised uh, result. And in fact, our denoised result for this particular case will be none other than the output from the CNN in this supervised um, learning case. So the denoised result is, is just that, actually. So I could just um, set that equal there. I mean, this is... Um, uh, Align too many for this first case that we're looking at. Um, anyway, let's press on. We've got uh, the output from our CNN, which I'm calling the denoised result. And what we're going to do next is um, record whatever the loss uh, function value is. So it just looks at what is the mean square error. And we're just going to store that in this list of values here. Then we're going to find uh, the gradients of that loss function. Um, with respect to all of the parameters in the CNN, uh, the convolutional neural network, in other words, all the parameters, all the kernel values, and so on. Find the gradient of the loss function with respect to those parameters. And once we found the gradients through backpropagating through that computational graph of the CNN, what we're then going to do is actually update the parameters. Um, so that's optimizer with a step um, actually performing if you like, the adding on, or in effect, the subtraction of the gradients, whichever way you're looking at it. So that will actually achieve um, an iterative um, gradient-based um, training of the parameters of our CNN. And it will be doing it in such a way as to minimize uh, this loss function, in other words, to minimize that mean square error loss. So it will change the CNN values such that um, when this noisy input is presented to the CNN to give this output, it will change the CNN values so that this output agrees with whatever reference we've chosen. And here it is indeed the true object. So let's take a quick look at this in action. Um, this is the last, these are the last few lines of code for the supervised learning case. Okay, so every 20 epochs, I will open up uh, another plot figure. Um, I'll switch axes off just for um, visual visualization without tick marks. I'm then going to show um, the uh, input noisy image, again, with a display range that's useful for us. I'm then going to look at the denoised result. That was the output of the CNN. Display that. 
And then I'm going to plot um, those training loss uh, values, okay, that were stored in that list. So here was the training loss, uh, the values from that, the values of the loss function. And I'm just going to give it a nice uh, title, um, okay, and put nice uh, labels here as well. You'll see um, those in a moment. And then our interactive uh, Python will uh, allow us to do inline display and updates. So let's see if this runs. Let's take a look. Okay, there we go. So this is now fully underway. Um, here's the noisy uh, input image. And then this is the output of our CNN. And on the right hand side, we have the training loss, uh, which is diminishing with um, increasing epochs or iterative updates of the parameters of the CNN. So you can see this is doing a very nice job uh, racing all the way through there up to 800 epochs already. And you can see uh, very effectively when we've got knowledge of the ground truth, um, this um, is converting this noisy image um, to this, uh, some, this denoised one that looks very close to the, the reference because we've only got one training pair here. So it's very idealized, rather artificial, but again, demonstrating to you how to go about coding up a CNN in PyTorch in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, okay, so that's doing a really nice job. Very pleased with the results on the screen here. I think the next thing to do though, uh, rather than finish here with this rather idealized uh, supervised learning case, what we'll do is we'll stop this and um, we'll um, put in a case where we don't have knowledge of the ground truth. So we'll see how that fares.